so welcome back everyone. Today we are going to be studying sound. The goal of this experiment is to determine what the speed of sound is uh, using a formula that goes like this. The velocity is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. We have a function generator, which all of you know um, how to use. This will be our source for the frequency. And we have a tube here, which will capture a sound wave. This tube, um, which has a length L, is related to the wavelength by a formula, which I'll mention uh, shortly. And once we know the frequency and the wavelength, the product of these two will give us the speed of sound. So I'll show you how you're going to set up the experiment, and I'll let you uh, take the measurements yourselves in the labs. There's a coaxial cable next to the signal generator or function generator. It has a, a B and C connector at one end, which you will attach to the output of the, the signal generator like this. Okay. The other end, we have two banana plugs, which you will attach to the back of this small circular speaker like this. Now, when I turn on the signal generator and I pick a frequency, let's say uh, 700 hertz, one kilohertz here times 0.7 hertz here in the fine frequency, and this is the coarse frequency. The product of these two is displayed here. So here we have 0.684 kilohertz. This signal generator now is powering the speaker and we can change the amplitude or, or the loudness of the speaker by turning this amplitude knob directly above the output. So the output is connected to this round circular speaker here. Notice that the speaker is positioned in front of an open tube. This tube is open at one end and if you notice inside the tube there is a piston which we can move by pulling this rod out. As we pull this rod out, we are effectively increasing the length of the tube. Now, in order to be able to determine what the wavelength that we're going to capture in this tube is, we have to um, uh, do the following. This speaker will send a traveling wave into the tube. When it uh, reaches the piston wall, it will reflect backwards. And in this length of tube, you are going to have two traveling waves passing each other in time. One going this way, and one going this way. Though you cannot see it, in this tube you will have an interference pattern that is always changing in time as the two waves pass each other. There's going to be constructive and destructive interference. Now this interference pattern is always there except, uh, except when you have this magic length as I call it. This magic length L, which is equal to n lambda over 4, the interference pattern will be frozen in time. Okay. Um, what do we call this uh, frozen interference pattern? We call it a standing wave. Since the interference pattern is no longer st uh, 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 changing in time, uh, for a tube that is open at one end and closed at the other end, the, stand, the, the, the boundary conditions for standing waves to form are always a maximum or an antinode, in other words, a maximum sound at the open end, and always uh, a node or a minimum at the closed end. This microphone here that's positioned at the open end of the glass tube is connect, will take um, the uh, sound energy convert it into electrical energy, and we will display this electrical energy, or voltage, on the oscilloscope. We connect the cable to channel one of the oscilloscope, turn on our oscilloscope, and make sure that um, the microphone switch is also turned on too. Now, 
if the microphone switch is turned on and it's connected to channel 1 and our oscilloscope is turned on, we get a signal. Um, this uh, microphone here is, like I said, picking up uh, a sound energy and converting it into an electrical voltage that is displayed here. Now, look what happens when I move the piston away from the microphone. I'll increase the amplitude a little bit more, um, so the sound is a little bit large, uh, higher on the speaker. And as I move the microphone, I mean the, the um, piston away from the microphone, the open end of the tube, do you notice that we have a maximum here? And if you were listening carefully, you will also notice that the noise at the open end of the tube is also maximum and continuous. So what does that tell us? That tell us that we actually have a standing wave, a frozen interference pattern, where it's always maximum at the open end and minimum at the closed end. If this length is, uh, let's say, 10 centimeters, and uh, this magic length is equal to n lambda over 4, this would be a quarter wavelength because n will actually be uh, a quor uh, 1. So the next uh, a value for n will be 3. So that would be 3 quarters of a wavelength. So um, um, our tube would have to be this long in order to get the, the second standing wave. So let's see if we can actually get um, a second interference pattern, a standing wave that's frozen in time. Okay. A um, little bit louder. Um, we pull out the piston, and you will notice that um, as we approach this position here, the sound uh, at the end of the tube diminishes, and then as we get close to that point, it starts to increase again. Can you see how it increases again? Okay, so now we measure this length, and this length is equal to, again, to n lambda over 4, this time n is equal to 3, okay? Since um, we know um, what um, the length is, we can determine now what uh, the wavelength is. And since we know the frequency that we're applying to the speaker and the wavelength that we have captured in the, this glass tube, the product of these two will give us the speed of sound. And um, you will repeat this experiment twice. The first time for about 700 hertz, and the second time for 1400 hertz. And you are actually going to determine for yourselves whether the speed of sound, V, is actually dependent on the frequency or not. Okay? So that's it for this part of the experiment.